Now, tomorrow night's debate, the format of it is going to be a town hall, but unlike the first presidential debate, it will not be limited to just domestic issues. So, what topics should we hear about tomorrow night? Well, trust me, expect Libya will come up. How will the president respond to charges that his administration messed up or even covered up the attack? And how can Mitt Romney press without possibly overreaching. I also think a number you're going to hear, whether it's in the form of a question or from the president, will be 47. Not the percent tape here and plans for social safety net that the candidate or the challenger Mitt Romney will have to explain. And also, can he also sell his voters on the plans for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid? Also, trust me, taxes will come up. Can the president convince voters to back his tax hike when it comes to the top end? And can Romney sell his across-the-board tax cut plan? And will he offer specifics on how he's going to make all that math work? Jobs, as uh, Steve mentioned here, and jobs creation still issue number one with the electorate. So which of the two men on the stage tomorrow night can convince voters that he has the better plan? And can the president use the drop in the unemployment rate to 7.8% to his advantage, or is still that just too big a number to sell the American public as progress? And when it comes to health care, can Romney convince people to trust him after his emergency room health care comments he re made recently? Can the president resell America on Obamacare when he seemed to all but disregard the issue when it finally got passed? And, of course, social issues will very possibly come up, and abortion being one of them. Romney recently tried to move to the middle here. Will that be an area where he's vulnerable to an attack tomorrow night? All right, guys, let's first talk Libya. And I'll start with you, Michael, in that the sound uh, from the fourth estate over the weekend, uh, even by guys like Lindsey Graham, who's not a, you know, a bomb thrower here, saying there was a cover-up. We knew 24 hours after this had nothing to do with the tape, yet they went on the Sunday morning shows right. and said otherwise. I thought Joe Biden answered it, but arguably he could have even opened the door more. How vulnerable is the president tomorrow night to this? Mm -hmm. And moreover, what can his response be to give people comfort um, that you know he not only will be getting to the bottom of this, not just for political expediency? Right. It's not just the issue of Libya. Libya is, a st of course, is a, is a very serious issue on its own, but Romney will be coming at the president on that as a stand-in for international affairs generally and certainly in the Mideast. Uh, the president uh, not yet meeting with the Israeli prime minister, uh, concerns over uh, 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 Iran being ready uh, with nuclear capacity, and just that tinderbox of a region where the president has always been vulnerable. Um, but that the polls have shown that he consistently, for the first time in recent memory, the Democrat had a real substantive advantage over Mitt Romney when it comes to this. Obviously, Osama bin sure. Laden, right. um, the dates for troops coming back from Afghanistan, Iraq. Mm -hmm. You think it's flipped now? You think he's on defense, the I president? Think it, I think it can flip. I'm an Obama supporter, but I think that it can flip. And I think that Libya is a stand-in for a whole host of issues that important demographics of the electorate care about. You got to go by that? The, yes. Yeah. The, the polls are already showing that the American people, based on the polls right now, the snapshot in time right now, that they've turned on the president. And it, they're obviously showing via the poll numbers that they're putting trust in Romney. Here's the problem. The president and his team did an excellent job of defining Romney in the beginning of this campaign. But now, the president towards the tail end of the campaign, it is flipped, and he's on the defensive. So Obama is not known as someone to attack naturally. But so you know what, what we're going to be watching what, tomorrow to is my, what is he going to do? I, I can tell you what I, I would counsel him or anybody, regardless he's of party, got to if attack. he's got a record for four years, it's to not say, about record tomorrow. if he's going to say, well, oh, he can say this, we like, time out. Um, you and I disagree on a lot of things, Mitt Romney, including the fact that you thought that you, we shouldn't go to the ends of the world uh, to kill Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. You and I disagree on that, and I stand by the decision to kill him. Right. He turns the narrative, I think, on that part. He hasn't been one to puff his he's, chest out, he's Andrew, and say, that's attacked, what I do. Attacked. Wouldn't it be interesting if the president leaned on his secretary of state to say, Mm -hmm. Whatever your opinion of me, I think we could all agree that Secretary Clinton has been doing a wonderful job. Tell somebody else, I don't want to steal it, but I think it was John Hammond. Just the deal that Kennedy's must have, I mean, the Clinton's must have here after this election. We're going say, this is what we want of President Obama. We want this and this and this. You know? Keep in mind, this is still not going to be a foreign policy election. This is going to be a domestic policy election, and I think the president, as long right. as he just doesn't look like he's waffling well, I don't know, or equivocating. Andrew, I think you get real hurt on Benghazi tomorrow. Well, I, and I think here, I don't know why we don't learn by history. Okay, I think a lot of us were frustrated. We didn't find weapons of mass destruction in Iraq because there wasn't openness and transparency. The truth always comes out. And when our ambassador was killed on foreign land, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. by al-Qaeda terrorists, and it took three weeks to recognize that, 
the American people will find out, and I think it's always about transparency is always in our best shape. And I'm a combat veteran. I served in the Gulf of Sidra. I've served in the, in the Mediterranean. And I first. But he's got to be careful. We shouldn't Mitt Romney tomorrow because the family now of the of the fallen ambassador, Ambassador Stevens, says, "Do not use yes. um, but our but his son." It it's but, a political but, but thing. So I, I got yeah. questions about this entire line of attack because. I mean, if you go back to September 11th, there were protests outside our, our embassy in Cairo. And at the same time as when this attack started in Benghazi. So to, uh, it's understandable that there was confusion at the time as to what, whether this was uh, an attack in and of itself or whether this sprang from a, a protest, as was originally thought. I, I don't think the, the Obama administration has been as, as evil incarnate as they've been uh, brought they out to be. Up. I think they made a mistake. But I don't think it was necessarily done with my, the my intention problem, of covering Don, my it up. My problem, Andrew, is I was confused you too. Is that um, <laughs> if they start to say, if they start to say, right, that hey, wait, they asked for more security in Tripoli, mm -hmm. not in Benghazi. They've already lost. If they start going down that road, now listen, I got time here. I never understood, Dom, how even if the president was asleep for 90 minutes, he didn't say the number 47 percent. Okay, it took Biden all two minutes to get it in. All right. <laughs> so my point is. He's going to get it in somehow, some way. Oh, in the first two or three minutes. I mean, maybe, maybe. see, he's got to walk a fine line. He's the president of the United States. He's got to carry himself that way. But you better believe it's not even about foreign relation issues. It's about attack, attack, attack. He has got to bring Romney Don't you down. Don't tell me he can't be the angry black man? Right, I do say he can't be the angry black man. And I'm glad you brought in race because it only Usually confirms, Dominic, it because it only confirms what I've been yeah. saying all along. Mm -hmm. As the first black president, and we can laugh about this, his support has never been solid. And Romney's rise has only proven that fact, that his support, no matter what the polls showed, right. and I told you what I thought about polls. You did. All right. <laughs> now, I can't say on TV. Now, Steve, let me, let me ask you, though. And this is something I'd imagine you and other Republicans running the tax issue and the tax cut issue more specifically. Um, at the end of the last debate, Romney got to define terms to say, listen, uh, you know, yes, I want a tax cut across the board. Um, uh, we'll find the deductions. And oh, by the way, there won't be a tax cut unless we can pay for it. I'm yeah, imagining he he's going to get a tax cut across the board, but keep going. Oh, no, well, you yeah. say it. Um, but 20% across the board here, including lowering the top end rates here for the folks paying right now, yeah. roughly 35%, bringing them down into the 20s. L lower the rates, take out deductions. Okay, exactly. so my point is, will he have to, and should he, mm -hmm. define where these deductions are or can he have the same kind of performance he had last time where say, trust me, I'll make the numbers add up if I'm elected? Yeah, I think that that's just a great question. Um, I think, I think <laughs> part of it is, part of it is the reality of where those cuts will be defined. And they're going to be defined in committees, down in rooms in Washington. And that's why it's so important to send people there on your behalf who you trust, well, right? Who will negotiate. partisanship to have his vision become exactly, reality. Exactly, exactly. But, it, but it is, this race is about at every level, who do you trust to negotiate on your best behalf, right? And I think giving examples are important. Like I've said that a second home mortgage deduction and how it phases out for people who are at the higher end. I think Governor Romney has talked about that in, in certain ways. I think it makes sense because I think he's trying to say people who are in the upper end won't pay less tax in terms of total dollars and it should still be a progressive system, right? That, but, we, but we need to do that and take the complexity out of a race and let people well mean to go and negotiate a deal in Washington. And but that's why it comes down to who do you trust. But it's about emotion and it's about choice. I believe, and a lot of people believe, that the president missed an opportunity to channel and reflect and express everybody's outrage during the bailout and during the financial calamity and what right. the banks got and right. too big to fail in Wall Street. But the 47% remark by Governor Romney provides him another opportunity, totally unexpected, yeah. to do that all again record earnings still in the midst of a grinding recession by some of the biggest banks on Wall Street right. that Mike, benefit from pick zero that percent point up after the break. And when we come back after the break, uh, we want to set the stage here because it's not the same debate, just in a different place and different moderator. We're going to talk about tone here. Should the president, as Dominic has said, I think five times here, get aggressive? Um, will Romney be able to impose his will like he did the last time? How will the optics play out? Without a doubt, forgetting even the substance, Romney totally controlled the optics here. Tomorrow's moderator, how big a role will she play? And there's already controversy about that. We'll tell you about that. We're going to get into everything you need to know as we get ready for 9 p.m. tomorrow at the stage you see on your screen in Hoster, New York. Stay with us.